Johnny Rise, and today we're talking about what everybody wants to know. Should you choose the Axie HD or the iFlight Crystal patch antennas for your DJI FPV goggle setup? I'm going to read your thoughts. Let's see now. Well, both of these are great options. As you might have guessed, they perform very, very similarly. Uh, but what I didn't expect was just how similar the performance was going to be. And we're going to kind of cover the pros and cons of each setup and hopefully give you a recommendation to make your decision. But spoiler alert, there's really not a lot of difference in the performance that I was able to notice. I took this back, the iFlight Crystal, to do um, the same test that I performed in my previous DJI goggle testing. Uh, if you want to go check out that video, I tested the Axie HD versus the True RC Stubbies versus stock versus the True RC patches, and of course, combination of stubby and patches. And this performed very, very well. In fact, only the True RC Giant X Airs uh, were able to defeat it in that test. Um, so I went and did the same test with this, and at first, it failed way earlier, earlier than stock. And I was like, okay, something is wrong here. Are these just not that good? And then I realized the day that I went, it had been raining for several days. So my unscientific test was to find a super large area of trees, bushes, brush, fly around it to induce a failure of the DJI system because it has problems penetrating things like leaves. And so um, that way I can get an unscientific comparison against all of the ones, which one has the widest beam, which one has the best penetration. Uh, but I realized that that test was flawed if it was wet because water is gonna block that signal even more. So I went back a couple days later when it was dry and it flew farther than all of the options. And I was like, what is going on? Then I realized, oh, it's winter. All of the leaves have fallen off. And so now my test is not repeatable. I've, brown, I devised this unscientific test so it could be repeatable multiple times against all different kinds of antennas. But I didn't remember that in Texas, we actually do have a very small winter in which there's no leaves that last about two months. So, okay, I can't really perform that test. It appears though that it performs very similarly. So what I did was, just keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every time I went to go fly. And I just can't tell a difference. I can't tell a difference. My God. Do you know what this means? Uh, there's certain scenarios where it feels like the beam of the Axie HD might be slightly wider. I don't know why because I can't actually get any definitive info, but I feel like the Axie HD might be slightly, slightly better, but then there'll be certain times where I'll forget which one I have on just because I'm switching it so frequently, and it could be either one. So they're so close in performance that I think it's gonna come down to size, looks, preference, and availability on which one do you choose. Now for a long time, this Axie HD was so hard to find in stock because everybody wanted them. Uh, and then when this thing came out, it was like, whoa, is this better? But Hugo Chamberlain, the true RC antenna designer that does all the Axie stuff, designed this. So I would feel a little bit more safer in his capable hands. I've trusted Axie antennas for years and years and years and years. Um, so do you want the pedigree of the Axie brand that has a known antenna RF designer at the core? Or do you want to go on the looks? Because the iFlight Crystal does have, I believe, three different colorway options that you can choose. I think the most handsome is this carbon fiber look. Um, and at first glance, it feels like this is more flush, gonna fit into a bag more. But I took a couple of pictures of these flat on a table and they're actually almost the same height. If anything, the crystal actually sticks out a little bit more than the stock faceplate with these um, Axia. So if you're thinking this is gonna save you size, it does not, so get that out of your mind. It's really just a looks thing. If you would rather stick them on, the outside 
or remove and replace your faceplate altogether. Um, I do like that the SMA screws are a little more hidden on the iFlight Crystal, so that is a plus. Um, is the angle of this gonna be affected at all? So for these, you're essentially placing the angle yourself. Now it is laid out similar to the shape of this, so it should be fairly repeatable on how you're gonna be having the angle of these. They're slightly angled like that, so you'll get somewhat of a nice wide beam capturing uh, with both of these antenna elements and the iFlight Crystal has a similar spread right there. But honestly, the true RC stubbies are gonna be the smallest of any of those. So my preference is to run one of these along with true RC stubbies at the top. That's kind of the Johnny 5 combo that I talked about last time. So why do I have the BDI adapter on here right now? Well, I was going to a race the other day and I only had one digital racing quad. So I had a few analog racing quads in case I smashed my digital racing quad and would have to switch to analog quickly i wanted this module now i do have the module on the side but i broke it because i got it from the car too quickly and yanked this power connector off this is only a 13 dollars option i already have another one i just haven't put it on yet um i actually really really like the way that this looks i wish there was an easier way to have a patch option with something like this so I don't know guys, if you have, if you have either one of these, I don't think there's a reason to switch to the other one. They perform fairly equally. They both look great. I mean, I like the look of this. I like the look of this also. So do you want pedigree or do you want ultimate clean looks? Space wise though, it might look like this one's smaller, but it's not. What do you think in the comments, guys? Which one did you go with? Do you even care? Do you just want one or the other? Neither one of these performs as good as the giant X-Air antennas that sit on the side of your head, look, making you look like Doc Brown when he answers the door for Marty back in 1955. Um, so either one of these is a compromise of reception and penetration and range in some way, but I think it's worth it for the space savings, I can throw it with either one of these into my bag, uh, no troubles, not having to remove antennas. And when it comes to going out to the field, it already takes me 30, 45 minutes to get everything packed up. I gotta pack up my batteries, my spares, my props, my tools. I gotta make sure I got all my radio, my batteries, my goggles, my charger, my air, you know, it takes so long. Last thing I wanna do is add any length of time onto any of those steps that are gonna prevent me or reduce my flight time when I go out to fly even more. So time savings of having to take off, put on antennas is very valuable to me. So that alone is worth wanting one of these. I don't really long range. If I did, you could stick with the True RC, but a lot of times even long range people aren't flying long range every time. These are both great options. I wish it was more definitive on which one was better, but they both seem pretty good. Thanks guys.